Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Election Day is November 6th, so before we start the show, we just want to encourage you, if you have not done so already, to register to vote! Yes. Save the it democracy. is your it is your civic duty and there are deadlines for voting registrations so, and they do vary state by state so go to usa.gov right now look up your state figure out when your deadline is and register and then don't forget to get your butt to the polls on november 6th you can also sign up to get an absentee ballot if you can't make it that day so mm-hmm. whatever you yep. gotta do it's easy if you know how to get that information. So USA.gov, do it, treat yo country. Trade it. Oh my God. All right. You are listening to Wine yeah. and Crime, the podcast. Wine and Crime. Where three, <laughs> where three friends chug wine, <coughs> chat true crime, and, and unleash the longest hairs <laughs> humanly possible from their mouths. Ew. It's so it's bad. I think it's from Callie's <laughs> tail. I was grooming her ick. last night. Ick, 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 oh. ick, 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 With my ick, tongue. Ick, ick, ick. ick. <laughs> like a mom. <laughs> like a mama cat. All right. It's too uh, far even I'm, for me. <laughs> I'm Kenyon. I'm Lucy. And I'm a man. <coughs> <coughs> Amanda. <laughs> and, and this week we have a very special fan pick episode I'm super excited about this topic. I thought I would hate researching this. (laughs) I really (laughs) did. I really did. I'm sorry. I thought I would hate researching this, but because it's just like a little bit tough to, you know, identify what exactly maybe that means. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to like get fun with it. And it was Mm -hmm. one of my most favorite research things yeah honestly got kind of fun with it got fun with it so i was like who tells me what this means kind of it can mean whatever i say (laughs) it means all right so the topic which was selected by lexi mcclellan um is royal kerfuffles the first thing i googled was literally royal kerfuffle crimes question mark <laughs> Did not yield useful results. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> not helpful. Yeah. Maybe a tad too specific. Uh-huh. Um yeah, well, Amanda, what is our wine crime pairing for royal kerfuffles? Well, Lexi not only knocked it out of the park with the topic choice, but knocked it out of the freaking stratosphere with (laughs) the wine pairing. I love this so much. Today we are drinking Chronic Cellars Sofa King Bueno Red Blend. (laughs) (laughs) Like so fucking bueno, but it's Sofa King Bueno Red Blend. Well, you get it. A lot of people might not get it. Oh, okay. Spell it. Spell Just it. so I'm you know, don't spell it. Not all of our <laughs> listeners are super on top of the the slang from the Dave Ryan in the Morning Show ten years ago. <laughs> I was gonna say um, a lot of our listeners have never been eleven years exactly. old. Exactly, you never know. <laughs> Um, So this is not a Wink Wine, but as always, we need to give a solid shout out to our amazing sponsor, Wink Wine Club. It's a really cool online wine club that literally helps you pick wine for your palate and delivers it to your door. So go to trywink.com forward slash gals for $20 off your first order. And if you put four or more bottles in your cart, they take care of the shipping. So run, don't walk. Trywink.com forward slash gals for $20 off your first order. Four bottles is nothing. I know. Put 20 yeah. bottles in there. It's like a weekend. Do more. Yeah. 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 Also, if you're somebody who you're like, I don't know if I'm cool enough to be part of an online wine club, like I just buy two buck chuck at Trader Joe's, mm-hmm. you know, which is like totally valid and actually you think delicious. We're cool enough. We're not cool. No. Yeah. 
Like, we're not cool enough either, but it's an amazing service, and you don't have to lug your wine from the grocery store back home. So and you'll sign look up really today. cool. Yeah. And appearances are all that matter, right, ladies? In this age of Instagram. Yeah. That's a sad reality. <laughs> anyway, um, <sighs> this hilariously named Little Beauty is a gorgeous blend of 46% Syrah, 31% Grenache, 13% Petite Syrah, 10% Mauverde, and 2% Tanat. Are you okay? I might cry. I'm, j- <laughs> I'm just going to trust you that those numbers add up. I love it so much. This is straight up mm-hmm. just a list of my favorite red varietals blended into what I can only assume is about to be my new favorite wine. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. This blend is out of Paso Robles, California, which is renowned for its seemingly perfect grape growing climate. And this <laughs> wine is fruit forward and approachable with hints of blackberry, strawberry, and dark cherry on the front end. I'm practicing <laughs> my voice for my case. Mm-hmm. And um, a yeah. nice long finish of dark chocolate, caramel, and leather. Stop. This <laughs> never sounds stopping. Amazing. Um, oh but I God. really do want to make out with this wine. It sounds amazing and mm-hmm. sexy and delicious. Uh, this bottle mm-hmm. retails for around $22, which is high on our price range. But mm-hmm. it's worth a little splurge, like for the label alone. It's so beautifully made. Um, it clocks in at about 14.5 ABV, so it's going to get the job done. And it just sounds amazing it's it's so fucking bueno yeah it's so fucking bueno so let's pop it i might actually give this one a minute to breathe before i pour it just Mm -hmm. because i want to see what that tastes like maybe i'll try taste it first and then give it a a swirl and see how it because opens up we can we can try to be classy here and there yeah i just now and then sometimes with these red blends i like to let them oxygenate just a little bit and let them like reach their full potential before i just knock them back down Mm. my gullet drinking them so fast they glide over my taste buds and i have no idea what they taste like you know yep 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 okay i'm on board board. all right oh Royal pop. So royal. Yeah. Kerfuffle yeah. pop. Mm, it's so pretty. <laughs> I love it. Kerfuffle of five. All right, I'm going to start, you know, enjoying Airing. and spacing out. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> During the entirety is- of Lucy's segment. <laughs> <laughs> what is our background and psych for royal kerfuffles? There's really no psych. I mean, how I guess dare a you? Bit of, uh, <laughs> questionable sanity. Um, yeah. Really, I didn't really know what to research about this, so I just have a list of a bunch of weird facts about royalty. Cool. And it's very Eurocentric. So I'm just going to put mm-hmm. that out there now. All of the listicles I found were really just about European uh, royalty. Yeah. So Same. I'm acknowledging it. We're moving on. Okay. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> I guess I'd never really thought about this before, but it makes sense. Um, a king marrying a woman makes her a queen, but a queen marrying a man makes him a prince. Yeah. Like Hence, Prince Albert. Prince, Prince Charles. Prince Albert, the piercing or the person. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, both. Quite. Okay. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to love this episode. So <laughs> this is the only part that's not European. So enjoy it while you Skip can. Skip it. <laughs> the names of uh, royalty in Russia up until 1917 were a czar or a czarina. Czarina sounds love like it. a Pokemon. Yeah, I, I like love that one hundred percent. Czarina, czarina. Gotta like catch Karina, them all. Karina. <laughs> Pokemon. Like um, an emir is a native ruler in parts of Asia and Africa. An emperor or empress is a ruler of an emperor, such as in ancient Rome, 
or current Japan. Mm. Oh, okay. They have emperors still, apparently. Well, I don't know. who knew? Well, geez. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> a, a pharaoh we're, we're is the ruler so of ancient Egypt. A Raja pharaoh, is an pharaoh. Indian prince. Whoa. whoa oh, my God. Let my people I thought you go. were tuning out. Can you la, please tune la, out? La, 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 la. <laughs> pharaoh, Pharaoh. No, your notes are so interesting. Uh, I'm uh, engaged. A Shah <laughs> is a sovereign of Iran. Let my people Iran. go. <clears throat> a Sultan is a head of a Muslim state. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, also, there are a lot of weird things about the current British royal family, such as not being able to eat anything with garlic in it, but those listicles are readily available. What with the fervor around the royal family, which I don't fucking understand. People who are obsessed with the British royal family in the United States. Um, I got I up at four uh, in the morning to go to Brit's yeah. pub and watch <laughs> Kate and Will's get married. You're yeah. ridiculous. No, I'm not. I, I have commemorative teacups. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm amazing. I have oh a my Queen God. Elizabeth commemorative really teacup that lives in my car that I keep my change in. It's a good luck charm. Mm-hmm. You're a hoarder. No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm quirky <laughs> and, and Kate fun. Kate Middleton I'm eccentric. is amazing. <laughs> okay, so if those are the facts that you're looking for, look it up your damn self. Kenyon and I are going to co- fucking come for you. Like, oh, we uh-huh. will have your head how... <laughs> Dare you? Kate Middleton is the quen to bam. I don't get it. I'll never get you it. You wouldn't. You're too uncivilized. I guess. Your Iowan roots. I just like garlic and shellfish too much. Because the they can't eat either one. Whatever. Yeah. They could get sick and also they got to talk to a lot of people. They can't have garlic breath. Did you know that the Queen of England has two birthdays? Oh, my God. What? Is this a joke? <laughs> no. The actual day of her birth is April 21st, but that's too chilly for the full fucking parade that she has. Thank So God. her observed birthday is in June. This is goals. <laughs> this is and fucking this is, goals. This is the case for many monarchs whose actual birthdays were inconvenient for the people. <laughs> I love this I so love it. much. Oh, that's gr- That's good. In 1087, a heckler interrupted the funeral of William I, shouting from the back of the church that it had been built on his father's land without his family being compensated. So just when his royal send-off couldn't have gotten any worse, William's sarcophagus was found to have been built too small to accommodate his body. And after an attempt was made to squeeze, squeeze his body into it, in the words of the English chronicler Oderic Vitalis, quote, the swollen bowels burst oh. and an intolerable stench assailed the nostrils of the bystanders and the whole crowd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there My is epitaph. possibly no worse smell than swollen bowels. <laughs> bowel exposure. Medieval swollen bowels <laughs> bursting. Ew. <laughs> oh no. Oh. That's what actually happened in that episode of Game of Thrones oh. when that big church exploded in green fire. Just... <laughs> Those were stink Just lines. Fart smell. Oh. <laughs> Pig pen. <laughs> oh I know you guys gosh. would like that one. Oh my god. Uh, I love this episode. Many- <laughs> Many <laughs> members of royalty have died tragically on hunting expeditions, yeah. probably because lots of people, like their brothers, are vying for their place on the throne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, don't like, go out into an isolated area with a bunch of weapons and people vying for your power. Yeah. <laughs> right. Lots mm-hmm. and lots of hunting accidents. Seems Pro smart. tip. Pro <laughs> tip. <laughs> <clears throat> Peter III of Russia was married to Catherine the Great in 1742 when he was 14 years old. When Peter married Catherine, she was 17, um, it was clear from the start that they were a bad match. Mm. Catherine Mm -hmm. was intelligent and driven, can identify, Mm -hmm. (laughs) while Peter Mm -hmm. was a stunted man-child. Did Peter (laughs) ever go by Dan casually? (laughs) <laughs> oh just, just wait just name. kidding just wait peter and Catherine's sex life was not much better 
It is unclear whether they ever consummated their relationship as Peter was more content to play toy soldiers in bed and make his wife dress up in military gear to run drills. <laughs> he was also a mean-spirited drunk who called Catherine a stupid whore in the middle of a banquet. One story mm-hmm. about Peter contends that when a rat bit the head off of one of his beloved toy soldiers, he gave the rat a proper court martial and trial, followed by hanging from a tiny gallows that he constructed. Uh, that's you. Okay. You Love would him. do yeah, that. Lucy is I would Peter hang the third. a rat. Yes, you would. I would in do a tiny gallows that you made yourself. Yes, you would. I would do would. everything up until the actual execution. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then I'd trap it in a pillowcase and release it in the woods behind my parents' house. Stop. Because I've done it yeah. before. I have a system. When I have a time. should be getting gallows. ready for homecoming. <laughs> you don't know my life. <laughs> in 1120, Stephen, one of William the Conqueror's grandsons, was set. Oh, you're going to like this. Oh, no. Was set mm-hmm. to cross the English Channel from France to England on a ship named the White Ship. <laughs> Clever. Okay. At the, you're going to like the name of the ship when you hear this. At the last minute, he changed his plans because he got the shits. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he had a bout no. of diarrhea. Oh, no. So he couldn't go on the white ship. <laughs> the white ship ended up sinking, killing almost all of the 300 people aboard. So his diarrhea saved his life. Oh, my God. I, I often wonder how many times me like running late because I have diarrhea may have saved my life. Right? <laughs> you avoided like a 20 car pile. Yeah. For or sure. Or imperiled you. Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. This one's cute. Henry III received a polar bear as a gift from the King of Norway in 1252. He kept the bear in the Tower of London and had it taken down to the Thames for a swim every morning. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of cute. <laughs> I know. Oh. There's just a polar bear but swimming in the river. Oh, yeah. my God. Fishing and swimming, frolicking, whatnot. Different times. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing that? Like, you lived across the river. You're like, what the fuck? What? That'd be amazing. Just the, just the royal white bear for its morning <laughs> dip. Morning constitutional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, to celebrate the coronation of King Richard II in 1377, fountains of wine were built all over London. Hell yeah. Oh, Can we do yes. this when Trump is impeached? Yes. <laughs> yes. Just franzia fountains, fountains worldwide. <laughs> Got to keep costs Can we have low. like vodka tonic fountains? We will make our own. <laughs> Uh, Christian VII of Denmark masturbated so frequently and obsessively, Amanda can identify. I was just going to mm-hmm. say, my ears are perking. That, <laughs> that his doctors were concerned for his health. <laughs> also, when visiting dignitaries bowed to him, he would leapfrog over their backs. Oh, my God. Yeah, he, yes. was, he was like totally insane. I love yeah. him. Yeah. Christian the mm-hmm. seventh. I read like a big long thing about him. He was really, really disturbed. Like yeah. these were the funny things he Who did. Who are but we <laughs> to judge? I mean, mm. he you should Google him. He was fucking he there was something plaguing him. He was he was off his rocker. Yeah. Uh Henry the Sixth was coronated at the age of nine months. Babies are so cute at that they age. They are I get the it. cutest little kings. Baby's first coronation. <laughs> Baby King 2020. <laughs> Is that your aim name? That's going to be my new aim name. <laughs> uh, so he died some 50 years later due to, quote, pure melancholy and displeasure when he found out that his son had died. So he died of a broken heart, oh. allegedly. Queen Dumb. Anne was. <clears throat> What? Dumb. Oh, God. I thought you said yum. (laughs) Queen Anne. Yum. (laughs) Queen Anne 
was a widow who had been pregnant 18 times, had 17 miscarriages, and her only Ugh. son died at the age of 11 from hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. Yeah, that's some oh. tragedy right there. Um, oh my she God. died in 1714, and her body was so ravaged and swollen by gout, etc., that she had to be buried in a square coffin. Oh, my God. One of her oh. doctors wrote a letter to Jonathan Swift saying, quote, I believe sleep was never more welcome to a weary traveler than death was to her. Oh. Yeah. Is that sad? Oh, my God. That is really yeah. sad. Only oh funny, weird God. stuff. What is wrong with you? <laughs> the rest of them are funny and weird. Good, or you're okay. fired. I mean, most of the rest are funny and God weird. God damn it. This is funny. King George I declared all pigeon poop to be property of the <laughs> crown because it contains trace amounts of potassium nitrate, which can be used to make gunpowder. Yes. <laughs> all the pigeon poop for myself. All the pigeon yeah. poop of the kingdom shall be mine. <laughs> Everything the Did life you poop touches. Do you think they, as the eye can see? <laughs> yeah. Do you think they collected it? They had royal pigeon poop collectors <laughs> employed <laughs> by the crown. Scraping that shit off the cobblestones. <laughs> yeah, it's like modern day meter maids. <laughs> just like Ugh. they have uniforms. <laughs> yeah, it's the punishment for when you fuck up in a higher we post and you're demoted to pigeon century. scraper. <laughs> no, we really I were not. Been we such weren't. a good pigeon poop collector. I don't want to go back to participate. <laughs> I just want to be an observer. Like an invisible well, yeah, so observer. The smell. The smell. Yeah. No, will get in you. my reality, I won't smell anything. Except for food, which will always In be delicious. my reality. Okay. On, on our road trip to Chicago, Scott, we were just like chatting in the car. Oh, and Scott was like, if you could have lived in any other. We wanted to go to other... Medieval Times so bad. <laughs> Scott did? Uh, well, he... I did. No. Oh, God. Well, Scott, well, Scott was like, if you could have lived in any other period in history, like, what would it be? And I was like, am I wealthy? And he was like, no, you're like, as you have as much money your class is the same level that it is and now. Was and it was Queen like, Elizabeth. 2017. <laughs> like, I'm not going back more than a year because this is the best someone of my social class and poverty is ever going to live. Nah. <laughs> Can we go forward in time? Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this one was just silly. And so I just lifted it straight off of the article I read it on because of the twist, the Shyamalan twist in the middle yes. of it. Yes. Okay. There's a myth that on July 4th, 1776, George III wrote in his diary, quote, nothing of importance happened today. In fact, he didn't even keep a diary, so that's not true. Uh, he did, however, have blue urine. Yes. <laughs> Which uh, which has been ascribed to either porphyria or more recently to the medication his doctors were giving him. Like, okay. It's pure mercury. That myth about American pure independence. Mercury. That's not true. But he did have blue piss. Okay. To be fair. So no diary. Yes, blue piss. The man's piss okay. was blue. So let's <laughs> give him props for that. He mm -hmm. drank a lot of Gatorade. I want my legacy. Well, Kenyon's legacy is how yellow and dehydrated her piss is. Right. Oh, God. But I, wanna, yeah. I gag every time I think of that. I I'm want, sorry. Like, I love you. I want a but... scat or piss related <laughs> legacy. And I'm not working hard enough for that, I don't think. I need to no, realign my priorities. You need to get one of those um, clear plastic chairs that you can like poop on when someone lays underneath you. Yeah. That's a thing. Oh, I know. I was going to be a cam girl oh. once. I entertained the idea of getting one of those chairs and wearing a unicorn mask and sitting on cakes. Yes. <laughs> I would watch that. It was expensive yeah, to get into the industry. That. I didn't get started. I made a podcast mm -hmm. with my best friends instead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a much worse idea. I have regrets. You couldn't afford the cake budget. <laughs> yeah, cakes I are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Queen. Oh, you're gonna like this one too. Queen Victoria had a musical bustle that played the national anthem every time she sat down. What? <laughs> and I said it's like a patriotic whoopee cushion. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> My God, yes. <laughs> See, you could have that inside the cakes as you sit on them. So here for all of this. Just have it play "God Save the Queen." <laughs> <laughs> so I like. I'm gonna squish have play my Rihanna's ass cheeks umbrella. into this cake. If if I'll any of you are animators, I'm gonna need a video of a cartoon Amanda with a unicorn. Well, mask God Save the Queen, sitting plays. on cakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want one that just plays Cherry Cherry oh, over so and good. over. <laughs> you got the wit oh to God. move the cherry. Suleiman. <laughs> Su- the slowest Su- strip tease Su- that ends in sitting in a cake ever. <laughs> Su- <laughs> Su- With like Su- a choir Su- singing Su- behind Su- you. I love it so much. Ooh, okay. Uh, here's my last one. Lord Dawson, royal physician of George V, gave the king a deliberately lethal dose of morphine and cocaine as he lay on his deathbed so that he would die in time to make the following morning's headlines. (laughs) Dawson, Dawson even called his wife in London to tell her to let the editor of the Times know to hold back the publication. In his notes, Dawson pointed out, quote, the importance of the death receiving its first announcement in the morning papers rather than the less appropriate field of the evening journals. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nothing has changed. We still do shit yep. like this. There's still like the Friday afternoon news dump versus uh, sweeps week. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Not much has changed. I have no nope. urine. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whoopee cushion And Amanda's getting to work on her musical bustle I sure am <laughs> You're like mapping out the There are mechanisms. sketches and plans And it's enormous <laughs> Okay If you All feel right. the need to Craft commission a, musical a musical bustle, bustle <laughs> Maybe you should reallocate to your point. funds into talk space <laughs> <laughs> Masturbate to the point where your doctors are concerned about you. Uh, that's yeah. one that I might have. <laughs> Talkspace has licensed therapists that can help you with any number of issues, including excessive masturbation. They if might there's such actually a thing. have someone for like that type of thing. You I'm sure know. they do. That's a real thing. Yeah. I go to Talkspace for my chronic depression and anxiety, yep. so it's yeah. slightly less fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Talkspace does make it easy, affordable, and convenient to connect you with a licensed therapist. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that is so great about Talkspace as well is that it's very fast, the process of connecting you and getting you talking to somebody. When you're trying to make an in-person appointment, sometimes it can take a month or even more to get to get seen by a practitioner. Yep. And a lot and of And if you're in crisis, yeah, a lot of that's times not going to work. That kind of uh, that kind of time to wait. So this is a great way to get connected right away um, and really start I it's different for everybody and it depends on the availability in your area, but I was connected with a therapist within 48 hours of signing up for Talkspace. It was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Mine was like the next morning. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure that's not how it works yeah, for everybody, but it was very fast. It was really good. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. And you're usually given a choice of like three different therapists and you can like read their bios yep. and, and decide which one you think might be a, the best fit and try them out. And if it's not the best fit, you can just go back to Talkspace and ask to be reassigned. And that's no big deal because finding the right therapist is a little bit like dating. Um, but they make it easy for you and you don't have to, you know, travel, drive. Put Take on the pants. subway to an office mm-hmm. somewhere. Get off the toilet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the best. Yeah. So for $45 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals. Treat your brain. Treat it. If you're a regular listener, you probably heard us talk to forensic meteorologist Dr. Elizabeth Austin. My new mom. Bow, 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 bow. My new mom. <laughs> Um, If you haven't yet watched her show, Storm of Suspicion, you need to check it out on the Weather Channel on Sunday nights at 8 Eastern and 7 Central. Mm -hmm. It is not optional. This is required (laughs) Mm -hmm. work. 
Required e viewing. <laughs> Each week, Dr. Austin and lead investigators take you through a different case where weather was used to either cover up a crime, wacky, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. that led to a conviction. So it's a crime show unlike anything else you have ever seen, and you will not want to miss it. That is for sure. Storm of Suspicion has everything you love about your favorite true crime shows like deceit, murder, mm. who done it, figuring out who done it. <laughs> <laughs> and it adds a hint of weather like only the Weather Channel can. Mm -hmm. Did a hurricane initially cover up and then help solve a murder? Yes. How, <laughs> how did a rain puddle ultimately lead to a murder conviction? I don't know. Watch. So many it's ways. so good. I like have like I have goosebumps. goosebumps. <laughs> Watch to see how weather can help suspects stay under the radar and also lead to their downfall. LOL, I see what you did there. <laughs> downfall, rainfall. Radar. Rainfall. <laughs> downfall. In Storm of Suspicion, Dr. Austin will have you looking at crimes in a whole new way as she shows you how investigators can use Mother Nature to solve some of the most difficult cases. So, so cool. So watch Storm of Suspicion every Sunday night through November at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Weather Channel. Again, that's Storm of Suspicion every Sunday night through November at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on the Weather Channel. All right. We ready? Yeah. I think so. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm taking it way back this week to late 6th century Gepidia. Okay. Good old Gepidia. <laughs> like Wikipedia? Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's a little bit of a gif jif situation and while I say gif um, and my instinct is to, is to say Gepedia. Um, actually, it's Jepedia. So now I know you probably know all. I about don't know these people, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you can pronounce it any way you want, and I'd be like, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> huh? Wikipedia okay. sounds great. The Jepids were a Germanic tribe. The Jepid kingdom stretched from eastern Hungary, western Romania, and northern Serbia. Okay. The capital, or at least the, the big city, was Sirmium in what is now modern-day Serbia. Okay. At this time, most of the Jepid nobility had converted to Christianity, but the majority of their subjects were still pagan. So, hello, wine coven. Over a period of 20 years, there was pretty much constant fighting between the Jepids, the Byzantines, the Ostrogoths. Oh, God. The Ostrich Goths. <laughs> the ostrich goth ostriches, goth. just a fleet. <laughs> An air force of goth ostriches and just very thick eye makeup. Listening to Rammstein. Ostriches are pretty goth, <laughs> just naturally. I also am going to need fan art of an ostrich goth. <laughs> <laughs> like immediately. <laughs> and a group called the Lombards. Lombard things, supports. <clears throat> Got it. The Lombard supports. But things hadn't been going well for the Jepids for most of those 20 years of fighting. It was kind of a long, slow chipping away of mm. their territory and power. At the start of our tale, the king of the Jepids. <laughs> Was a dude named Cunnamond. Cunnamond. Okay. <laughs> and uh, foreshadowing, he would be known as the last king of the Jepids. Ooh. I feel like so you're think, reading this think, out of a big leather bound book in front of a fireplace. Yes. A candlelight. I, I tried to write it like that. <laughs> it's working. It's funny okay. because I tried to write mine in the opposite way and you will hear it you will hear the difference it is jarring <laughs> most of what you say is jarring so my correct. version of events is very casual <laughs> in oh, my no. writing all right in 567 cunnamond was killed on the battlefield he was decapitated by the lombards and the Lombards are also sometimes called the Longoboards oh, because Lord. apparently they were big surfers. <laughs> uh, really? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> German like dukes and duchesses in full garb just surfing just waves surfing. on the shoreline. The queen of Billabong. In the sixth century. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy, queen of Billabong. Roxy, queen of Billabong. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. That's fucking perfect. I want to go as her for Halloween. <laughs> okay. I so. have to get chunky blonde highlights this week to make this work. And just like, bead, like one thing of beads in your wedge hair. Wedge sandals. A giant um. bustle made out of like <laughs> hemp. sarongs. Hemp and puka, puka shells. <laughs> So <laughs> white foam <laughs> platform sandal flip flops. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm shorts. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so Cunamund being killed on the battlefield. Uh, this this was a major defeat, <laughs> the major defeat for the Jepids, and it marked the end of the Jepid kingdom. A little bit about the kingdom that won that battle: the Lombards, the Longobards. Um, it stretched from modern day Austria and Slovakia, but then later after this case, it would expand into like the whole Italian peninsula. And there's actually still a region in Northern Italy called, uh, Lombardy to this day. Mm. Okay. All of their lower As- backs are treated pro bono. <laughs> <laughs> I need a Lombard support. Okay. Yeah. As it so happens, Cunnaman's older brother, Taurus Mod, Claude your bod with Taurus Mod. <laughs> Amazing. Um, was also killed by the Lombards about a decade earlier. So both of the brothers of this of the Jepids were Ooh. killed. And um Taurus Mod was killed by the now king of the Lombards. This total douchebag named Albuin. And he was killed in a duel in the midst of a battle in which, quote, no fewer than 60,000 warriors were killed. Dang. Mm-hmm. So it's no surprise then that Cunnamond and Albuin hated each other. So Albuin had killed Cunnamond's older brother and then... Um, during a period of truce between the two kingdoms, Albuin was invited to the Jepid court, and he made a wise crack about having killed Taurus Mod. Oh, never make a wise crack mm-hmm. in like ancient monarch mm-hmm. times. Gepid. <laughs> You're gonna get <laughs> mortared. <laughs> and Cunnamond got pissed and then later mocked Albuin in front of everyone at the banquet. So they've both made fun of each other publicly and they fucking hate each other's guts. So then when Albuin gets a chance, he kills Cunnamond in a battle and decapitates him. Okay? Yes. I'm so following all of this seamlessly. <laughs> I could recount now. this entire tale from mere memory. <laughs> Roxy of I'm Billabong, my the best. end. Queen Roxy of Billabong <laughs> presiding. Okay, so Albois has killed Cunnamond, and now Cunnamond's beautiful daughter, Rosamond, is forced to marry Albois mm. after the defeat. Okay? So okay. she's forced to marry the guy that killed both her uncle and her father. Classic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I feel you, girl. Albois Albois's first wife had recently died before producing a male heir. So this was kind of a two birds. So she with was one useless. Stone. So oh she was God. useless and died. I'm just getting into the style of the times. Okay, okay. Right. Um, so he was basically humiliating the vanquished enemy, appropriating a woman's body through violence. And forcing that woman to reproduce. So it's pretty par for the course. He might as well have been a Supreme Court justice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> so, King Albois was known for his cruelty towards his new wife, Rosamond. The worst instance was noted by the chronicler Paulus Diaconus. 
At a royal banquet in Verona, Albon forced Rosamond to drink from a cup made out of her father's skull and commanded her to drink merrily with your father. Dude, that's fucking badass. Like, it's <laughs> fucked up, but it's bad ass. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be pretty pissed if I were her. Nope, I would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> I would drink it. As someone if with a dead, a dead dad. dad, I have more authority to say I'm going to drink it. Especially if it's a Mai Tai. <laughs> I would drink Especially a Mai Tai out of wine. literally everything. Mm. Anyone's skull. Yep. Okay, Albois apparently wore the skull cup dangling from his belt at all times. So it was awesome. just a constant m- reminder to his wife that he had murdered her father. Cool. Yep. So apparently cool. Rosamond <laughs> smiled at the jest and obeyed, but plotted vengeance in her heart. Um, the cup incident proved to be the last straw. She had suffered at Albon's hand for too long, and now she was determined to murder her cruel husband by any means necessary. Ooh, okay. Now I am alert and ready. (laughs) You're aroused by this. I am finally into this story now. God. Okay. Thanks. I'm just So, now... At this time, Rosamond had been seeking a little side action from her husband's best friend slash foster brother, Helmicus. This is hot. This needs to be a movie. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. So Helmicus uh, had a really important position at court. He bore the title of arms bearer to the king. Hello. So... He was he was important. He was high up. He had total access to anywhere he needed to go in the palace. Whatever. Also, in the absence of a male heir from King Albois, Helmicus had something of a claim to the throne if something were to happen to his best mm. friend. Oh, they should go on a hunting my. trip. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to get out of the castle for a few days? <laughs> for eternity. Mm, for the rest of time. Murder. <laughs> so, Rosamond, Rosamond and her lover Helmicus began to plot the king's murder, but they needed help. Okay? Because the king was was tall, he was big, he was a warrior in battle, he was strong, you know, it, they wanted to have some backup because if Helmicus couldn't take him on his own. Mm-hmm. So Helmicus suggests that they see if another dude, Paradeo, the king's chamberlain, might help them. And Rosamond approaches this guy. It's like, hey. She sashays up in her musical bustle. You bustle. couldn't sneak yes. anywhere. <laughs> In and with a musical bustle, <laughs> without Suleiman playing behind you, <laughs> echoing Su- down the Su- cavernous Su- hallways. I'm just picturing. I'm picturing somebody like walking down like a medieval stone castle with like, you know, torches lit and whatever. And there's just like the sound of Suleiman behind them. But every time they turn around, it stops. <laughs> I would love that. They're just going <laughs> mad to the sound of Neil Diamond in their fucking head. Oh my god. What if she was a sleepwalker too? It would be a night and day. <laughs> it's constant. Okay. So Rosamond goes to this guy, Paradeo, presents him with the idea. He's like, fuck no, I want nothing to do with this. My life is good. I'm not stir in the pot, go away. So, Rosamond devises a plan. That night, she disguises herself as a servant girl whom she knew Paradeo was sleeping with. Mm -hmm. And she makes the, she like holds the woman in another chamber and she substitutes herself in the woman's bed. This trick never works, ladies. I've tried. (laughs) (laughs) What? This okay. trick is rape. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So when when Paradeo arrives that evening, 
They sleep together. I imagine in complete darkness, or he doesn't have great eyesight. Or he um, just doesn't care. That he you. never pays attention anyway. The servant girl is like, ha! I knew it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, the act once consummated, she then reveals who she really is. And Paradeo is struck by the realization that he has just slept with his king's wife. Oh, shit. He's fucked. My wife. Rosamond blackmails Paradeo, saying, Indeed, you have now done such a thing, Paradeo, that either you kill El Buin or he will eliminate you with his sword. Ooh. Afraid of the retribution that he would face if the king found out he'd stopped his queen, Paradeo agrees to help the lovers kill Albuin. Yeah. I like that she's just making the dudes do her dirty work. Doy. Yeah. There's no other way to live. <laughs> <laughs> Not long thereafter, the court holds a banquet because there's always a banquet. And King Albuin gets sloppy drunk, which apparently is, like, pretty normal for him. And he is still napping by midday the next day. Eh, that happens. Yep. And on the pretext of, of making the palace quiet for her hungover husband, um, Rosamond has that wing of the palace cleared out of servants and guards. Ooh. No witnesses, no gods, yeah. no servants. So, she, so she's like, shoo, shoo, my king must sleep. He is hungover. Um, then Paradeo, Helmicus, and Rosamond slip into Albuin's chamber and first bind the king's sword with which he always slept to his bedpost. Ooh. Okay, so they get the sword, they tie it to the bedpost. I don't know why they don't just, like, move it to another room, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Albuin, this is a quote. Albuin, waking suddenly from his sleep and understanding the evil that impended, reached for his sword. Since it was bound fast, he was unable to draw it. So taking a footstool, he defended himself for a while. Oh, nice. <laughs> But alas, this most warlike and courageous man could achieve nothing against his enemy and was killed like any coward. I also have seen uh, translations that said killed like any poltroon. I can't hear you. You are such a fucking dork. <laughs> So that by the counsel of this wretched little woman, a man perished who was famous for the slaughter of so many enemies. Well, don't underestimate the cou the counsel of a wretched little woman. Yeah. Right? Hashtag wretched little women. What a terrible yeah. way to wake the up. The original nasty women. To wake up from your hangover. Like, ugh, I don't <sighs> need this right now. <laughs> Ugh, I have to fight for my life with a footstool. Hate it. Yeah. BRB, I okay, need some ice so, water before I even get into this. <laughs> yeah. Where is my Gatorade? I fucking cannot even. Um, okay, so Albois is dead. Yay. And Rosamond and Helmicus hastily marry. And as you remember, the plan was for Helmicus to take the king's place. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this did not fly with the rest of the Lombard nobility and all the bigwigs. They were super pissed at Helmicus and Rosamond. And the two realized that if they were going to survive, they had to flee the kingdom. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So, didn't quite work out for them. Of course, first, Rosamond took as many valuables as she could from the palace, and some say she took practically the entire treasure of the Lombards. Good. All, all of their flip-flops and boards <laughs> and board wax. <laughs> Puka shells. Puka shells. Um, she also took her stepdaughter with her, and this was the king's only child, and it was a daughter by his first wife. 
So either she had genuine affection for the princess and wanted to protect her from like the upcoming power struggle, or she was simply using the child as political collateral because she could be really valuable to like marry could off have been both. or probably could have been a mix of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not both? Yeah. So the man helping Rosamond and Helmicus, the newlyweds, escape was named Longinus, and he was the highest Byzantine official in the region. Oh, my. Once they escaped, Rosamond quickly realized that Helmicus no longer held any value to her. Oh, Oh my God. (laughs) He'd already helped her murder her husband, and he'd been rejected as king. He's useless. He's useless. He's just dead weight. He's just holding it back at this point. Yeah. Meanwhile, the powerful Longinus persuades Rosamond to murder Helmicus and marry him instead. Into it. And she is super down. I want to go back to the days where, like, affairs and relationships could be a matter of life and death with the (laughs) swift work of my sword. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. There's something a little romantic about that. A little erotic. <laughs> okay. Well, it gets really erotic. Just wait. I can't wait for her to fucking masturbate with the blood of the men who have wronged her. <laughs> One day, as Helmicus was emerging from his bath, Rosamond served her husband... A drink claiming that it was health giving. Yes. It's kombucha. So I, I promise. <laughs> I w- <laughs> Here's a cold pressed ginger and turmeric shot, my lord. Contains one pound of juiced carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Twice your daily recommended serving. <laughs> it's supposed to taste like garbage. <laughs> like poison. Tip it back, my lord. <laughs> Down the hatch, (laughs) my lord. Helmicus sips from the drink, but then he notices an evil twinkle in his wife's eye. Oh, fuck yes. Yes, yes, yes. Dead giveaway. He realizes instantly that he's been poisoned. Oh, that's the best. But rather than go down without a fight, he draws his dagger, I'm not sure from where, because he was naked, uh, and holds <laughs> it to Rosamond's neck, forcing her to, quote, drain what was left in the goblet to the dregs. Oh. Holy shit. This is a porn that I would watch. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and thus, these two most evil murderers died at the same moment, Sort of like a darkest timeline Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. I love it so Involving much. kombucha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And daggers and naked cake people in baths. He pu- drew um, his dagger from nature's sheath. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Up his butt. Draw your dagger against my neck, my lord. <laughs> Wipe it off, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Longinus took advantage of the situation by sending the princess, Albacinda, Albuan's daughter, and all of the Lombard treasure to his overlords in Constantinople. Istanbul. Constantinople. Constantinople. Istanbul. Constantinople. <laughs> Someone had to. Yeah. Um, which earned him major brownie points, so he he did fine. Paradeo didn't have the greatest life after all oh. of this. Mm. Sounds he uh, <laughs> sounds not surprising. Yeah, <laughs> he too was sent to Constantinople, and he was there forced to fight a massive lion in the Hippodrome Amazing. for the emperor's amusement. Oh. I wonder if he won. Well. Oh, no. <laughs> Paradeo did slay oh, the beast. No. The, the beast was slew. Um, which sounds like good news, except this was kind of a damned if you do, damned if you yeah, don't. Yeah, they kill him anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> after his victory against the lion, did the we emperor... learn anything from the ancient Greeks? From the movie Gladiator. <laughs> the em- Duh. The emperor became concerned that Peredeo's great physical strength would prove to be a threat mm-hmm. to him later on. Mm-hmm. So he had Peredeo's eyes gouged ah. out. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Later, Peredeo got his revenge by claiming to have a secret of the utmost importance he just had to tell the emperor. He was granted an audience with the emperor's two closest advisors. There, Peredeo pretended to whisper the secret, and the men stepped close to him to better hear it. But then... He drew twin daggers from his shirt sleeves, maybe butthole, we're not sure. <laughs> and the blind man dealt each a mortal oh, blow. Peradeo. Wow. Peradeo, 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 Peradeo. Okay. <laughs> I like right, to sing their the names. <laughs> <laughs> that's my wow. case. That is amazing. I love it. She yeah. slams her like... leather bound book closed. Time for bed, children. The dust. <laughs> <laughs> you kings of New England. We have a big day in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <Yeah>. have kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> My kids are yeah. going to be traumatized. Mm-hmm. I'm... All I would it. absolutely read this as a bedtime story to my yeah. hypothetical future children. <clears throat> Care of is a monthly subscription vitamin service that delivers completely personalized vitamin and supplement packs right to your door. And it's back to school time, and back to school time means you're always on the go, shuffling kids or yourself to practices and study groups, and not having much time to devote to staying healthy. Puh, reach to that. Mm -hmm. Care of can make Mm -hmm. taking care of yourself this autumn easy with personalized vitamin and supplement packets perfect for on the go. For Mm -hmm. show. Support your body with an extra health boost and vitamins you need to stay in shape after summer, which you know, like Mm -hmm. September rolls around and I'm just like, yeah. It's cute that they thought I stayed in shape over summer. (laughs) (laughs) But I'll take it. We'll take it. And back to school season can mean more stress and less time to take care of yourself. Yeah, hi, like McDonald's mm-hmm, drive through mm-hmm. Care of <laughs> makes it easy to get back on that health kick in a convenient and fun way. You can combat stress and stay healthy by adding some supplements for energy, stress, and sleep, God bless, yes. to your routine. Mm-hmm. And my favorite part, a portion of every sale goes toward the Good Plus Foundation, which provides expectant mothers in need with valuable prenatal vitamins. I love that so much. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so smart. Um, Also, whether we like it or not, winter is coming. (sighs) Jon Snow. Um, (laughs) So give your immune system a little extra love and a running start to help support your health in the cooler months ahead. It's so Mm. important. Um, 90% of people fall short of FDA recommended guidelines for at least one vitamin or nutrient. Mm. And, uh, you can take care of's online quiz and get the vitamins you need to get back on track and reach your health goals. The and quiz, that quiz is, is actually amazing. fun. Yeah, it's I, fun. I like, wanted to take it a second time because yeah. it's just like gr- graphically very pretty and I like talking it about is. vitamins. And it's so great at just narrowing down what your needs are because I am such a vitamin like noob. I had no idea what I was doing and this made it so easy to match exactly what I wanted. Like I wanted better sleep. I wanted a little bit more energy during the day. So they help, the quiz helped them create a pack that was going to provide those things for me and it's just so easy mm-hmm. and awesome. Mm-hmm. And I love that they have vegan and vegetarian supplement options available to match your dietary needs because a lot of vitamins actually are not vegan or vegetarian, mm-hmm. but Care of has those options for folks. Fish so that's oil, really baby. Great. You are allergic. I cannot have <laughs> that fish away. oil. Do not give me that fish oil. Yep. Care of is the best. So. For 25% off your first month of personalized Care Of vitamins, visit TakeCareOf.com and enter promo code GALS. Again, that's for 25% off your first month of personalized Care Of vitamins. 
Visit TakeCareOf, T-A-K-E-C-A-R-E-O-F dot com and enter GALS, G-A-L-S. Treat yo gut. Zola, the wedding company that will do anything for love, is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology all in the service of love. Mm. Mm. Zola takes the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites, save the dates, and invitations. A wedding registry and free, easy-to-use wedding planning tools. Mm -hmm. They have over 100 beautiful Mm -hmm. save-the-date and invitation designs, like actually super gorgeous gorgeous designs. There is one for every wedding style and color scheme. Like, there just is. Mm-hmm. There are so many, and they're so gorgeous. They also have a free guest list manager, which is extremely helpful. Mm-hmm. You can add your guests to Zola's tool, and they'll help you collect missing addresses, major mm-hmm. issue, mm-hmm. format your addresses, and track RSVPs. Like, this is the most handy part about Zola. Angel it. service. It's- <laughs> it's so convenient. And if you register at Zola, your Zola registry automatically integrates into your Zola wedding website, mm-hmm. which is genius. Um, so guests can get all the details they need about your big day and buy you a wedding gift in one convenient and beautiful place. Um, and the Zola registry also lets you create a honeymoon fund, Love that. Uh, which is huge because like if you're like me and Zach, we were together and living together for nine years before we got married. Like we had enough bowls, mm-hmm. um, but <laughs> we wanted to go on a nice, uh, you know, fancy honeymoon. So we put on our wedding registry uh, the trip to Zanzibar and people could donate any amount they wanted to that. So that was really convenient. So- for us. Um, you can also register for travel gift cards through Delta, Southwest, Airbnb, and more. Love that. Such a cool service. Mm-hmm. So sign up at Zola.com forward slash gals to get 30% off your save the dates and invitations order. That is an amazing deal. This is going to save you a bunch of money. Again, sign up at Zola.com, Z-O-L-A.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, to get 30% off your save the dates and invitations order. Treat your wedding, Mm -hmm. baby. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, are we ready for another story? I'm ready. Of a similar era. My body is ready. If you will. My body is ready. Um, Super not similar era. No, but like more similar than the era we're in right now. History, the I era guess. of yeah. history. The era of hers her story. <laughs> hair story. Hair story. Hair story. They do make amazing <laughs> shampoo. Um, so this is the most abridged version of the greatest royal kerfuffle slash cat fight in fucking history. Yes. So buckle up, because we're talking about Mary, Queen of Scots, and Queen Elizabeth I. Yes! <laughs> Damn! Mm-hmm. All these but, bad bitches. B- but with that classic Amanda <laughs> twist. Oh, no. <laughs> on the telling of the tale. Oh, no. Um, people always seem to take sides between Mary and Elizabeth, and history usually sees Mary as either an innocent and tragic queen cruelly victimized by her conniving cousin, or a silly little tart who made some bad love choices and foolishly plotted to take down her more level-headed cousin. Silly little tart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whether silly little tart. Silly, silly little, little tart. tart. Okay. Whatever you decide, their story has as much ruckus drama as a good old-fashioned 16th-century Jerry Springer cat fight. <laughs> Mary, Queen of Scots, reigned over Scotland from December 1542 until July 1567. She was the only surviving legitimate child of King James V and was six days old when her father died and she acceded to the throne. She Mm -hmm. married Francis Dauphine of France and had a brief stint as Queen of France till he croaked in 1560. Till he croaked. (laughs) Queen of what? France. Queen of France. 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 After his death, she returned to Scotland and eventually married her first cousin, Henry Stuart, Lord of Darnley. Ooh, as one does. He's not my cousin. He's mm-hmm. my first cousin. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. Um, he met an untimely... <laughs> mean girls. 
Huh? I can't hear you. It's from Mean Girls. Okay. He met an untimely end a few years later when the Donley's residence was literally blown up and he was found murdered in the courtyard. Uh, Bummer. Bummer. (laughs) (laughs) Bummer. (laughs) <laughs> James Hepburn, fourth Earl of Bothwell, was believed to have orchestrated Donnelly's death, but he was acquitted of the charge in April 1567, and the following month, he and Mary get hitched. What the fuck, mm. Mary? He is the prime suspect in your monarch husband's murder. <laughs> she knew. She was in on it. We, she knew. We all love a bad boy, but this is a bit much. <laughs> 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 Apparently... <clears throat> I am not the only one who felt this way because the Scots were riled up over this marriage and there was a full-blown uprising against the couple where Mary ends up prisoned in Loch Levin Castle. Wow. She was the forced... Loch. The lock. Locked in the ba- lock. Bad lock. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when they lock for you? <clears throat> <laughs> she was forced to formally relinquish monar- monarchical authority to her one-year-old son. Mm. They really love, like, <laughs> baby monarchs in this fucking era. <clears throat> um, and after an unsuccessful attempt to regain the throne, she fled southwards seeking the protection of her first cousin once removed, Queen Elizabeth I of England. Mary had once claimed Elizabeth's throne to be her own and was considered the legitimate sovereign of England by many English Catholics. Mm. So Elizabeth... Heretics! Yeah. As you can imagine, was not pumped to have this throne-claiming bitch all up on her turf. (laughs) Not jazzed. (laughs) Not jazzed. And Elizabeth was hard as fuck. She had Mm -hmm. had it rough. At the age of three, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth's father, Henry VIII, had ordered the beheading of Elizabeth's mom, Anne Boleyn. Hello, the Tudors. Watch Mm -hmm. everything Mm -hmm. on Showtime. Thereby (laughs) making Elizabeth illegitimate. And an illegitimate child was not typically allowed to become queen or wear any of the fancy jewelry. Cool. No. At age 21, she was accused of treason by her half-sister, Bloody Mary, and locked in the Tower of London. Bloody is such a weird first name for I a know. child. Mary Tudor. But Mary, there are two Marys then, right? Okay. Yes, Mary two Tudor, Marys. her half-sister, and Mary, Queen of Scots are different people. Okay. And Elizabeth hated both, both. of them. Gotcha. Um, and Bloody Mary locked Elizabeth in the, in the Tower of London. By age 25, she had escaped all of this drama and was crowned Queen of England, and Elizabeth was a survivor, and she didn't intend to lose her crown to her weirdo cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Shyamalan twist in his will and testament all Henry restored Elizabeth to her place in line for the English throne despite her being illegitimate and according to the will Mary Queen of Scots wasn't even in line at all in fact Henry decreed that she was to never sit her pretty Scottish fanny on an English throne <laughs> I hope that was a direct <laughs> quote from Henry VIII it was oh. apparently Henry never liked the Scots. Mm. But Mary believed that she should be queen because Elizabeth was illegitimate and therefore shouldn't be prancing around in pearls (laughs) and even went (laughs) as far as to marry that cousin of hers, Henry Stuart, who at the time was the male heir to the English throne. But we've already been over how that turned out. He fucking dies and you jump in bed with the bro who soups probs murdered him. Mm. Too many (laughs) Henrys, too many Marys. But one Elizabeth that matters. Mm -hmm. Before Elizabeth, just a little background on her. Before Elizabeth took the throne, England was declared a Catholic country by her half-sister, Mary Tudor, affectionately known as Bloody Mary, who had the throne at the time. Elizabeth was not pumped about this as a Mm -mm. Protestant and wasn't quiet about how not pumped she was, landing her a (laughs) sick imprisonment. (laughs) in the Tower of London, as we've previously discussed, so that she couldn't carry out a Protestant rebellion against the throne. Rebellion. Mm. Well, all she really needed to do was be patient, because in 1558, Bloody Mary dies. Because everyone just fucking dies. I don't even know Mm -hmm. how she died. She probably, like, had an infected pimple, and they never bathed, and she just dropped She pooped too hard. Could be. She pooped too... Mm -hmm. She shit herself to death, which was, like, a normal thing. Um... And as a result, in walks Can Lizzie. Relate. Can relate. Ben Lizzie there. takes over the throne as next in line. And basically, in the first five seconds of being queen, she declares England a Protestant country. Well, cool. 
that pisses off a lot of Catholics who have literally <laughs> nothing else to do but farm, avoid some kind of plague, and set about making plans <laughs> for her to be replaced by Mary, Queen of Scots, in the hope that she'd restore the Catholic faith. <laughs> mm-hmm. Even the Pope at the time, Pius V, issued a papal decree that granted English Catholics authority to overthrow the English Pepe. Queen. Mm. People. <laughs> As a result, Mary Queen of Scots became the focal point of numerous plots and intrigues to restore England to its former religion, Catholicism, and depose Elizabeth and even take her life. Mm-hmm. Shit is getting cray. I guess. Shit is getting real. So, Mary shows up under the guise of seeking protection because Scotland's all pissed off about her sketchy marriage to James Hepburn and the murderous attack that killed Henry Stewart. Tale as old as time. <laughs> kind of though, because it's basically the same. <laughs> Fucking as been there. My story, just yeah. a thousand years later. Right? It really is. Um, Elizabeth, though, is really not buying that this is the only reason Mary is showing up there. And perceiving her as a threat, Elizabeth has her confined in various castles and manor houses in the interior of England for 18 motherfucking years. Oh, wow. Like, yeah. Elizabeth was not taking any fucking chances here. Um, and she moved Mary from castle to castle in literally the bitchiest way possible. <laughs> so one time, Queen Elizabeth ordered Queen Mary transferred back to the ruined Tutbury Castle in the wintry weather of Christmas Eve, 1584, where it was so cold and stark that Mary became <laughs> ill because of the bad conditions of her captivity, imprisoned in a very damp, cold room with closed windows and no access to the sun. That's not cool. <laughs> oh, that sounds bad. Yeah, these bitches were already pale enough. Like, this is not good. <laughs> you are cold in 15- and clammy enough. Yeah, you don't need she's this like, shit. She's like, I just need some vitamin D just for a, God's just a sake. Drop. Well, she's also like through a keyhole. She's also from Scotland, where like there is no sunlight anyway, ever. <laughs> right? It doesn't Fact. exist. That's where I'm from. In 1585, Elizabeth ordered Mary to be transferred in a coach under heavy guard and placed under the strictest confinement at Chartley Hall in Staffordshire, under the control of Sir. Amius Paulet, I don't know. Nailed it. She was prohibited <laughs> any correspondence with the outside world, and Puritan Paulet was chosen by Queen Elizabeth in part because he abhorred Queen Mary's Catholic faith. So this oh, guy so was she wouldn't not... get any friendliness with her guard. No, he okay. was not very nice to her, we'd imagine. So now it's eighteen or sorry, <laughs> fifteen eighty six. <laughs> And Mary has not been free for nearly two decades, and everything seems calm until letters sent to Mary by a Catholic named Anthony Babington were found. <laughs> the letters not revealed Babington. not Babington. Did, Babing- did Babington blab? The, <laughs> he did blab. The letters revealed a plot to kill Queen Elizabeth and replace her with Mary, and this would become known as the Babington Plot, which literally sounds like a children's book starring a British teddy bear. (laughs) Totally does. Wearing galoshes. (laughs) Wearing galoshes and hanging (laughs) out at Paddington Station. I know, I was going to say lots of like cute watercolor (laughs) images of (laughs) the underground. Yeah. Okay. For this portion of the story, I want us all to just pretend we know exactly what's going on and exactly who all of these people are. God. Do you understand? I'm a a huge dork, so I kind of do, but yes. Okay. I mean, I'm not as worried about you as I am about Lucy. Just don't (laughs) ask me any questions. Do you know how many period films I've seen? I do know. (laughs) Okay. But I also know you both. Try me. Also, I'm barely paying attention Mm -hmm. anyway. Perfect. Mm -hmm. The long-term goal of the Babington plot was the invasion of England by the Spanish forces of King Philip II and the Catholic League in France, leading (laughs) to the restoration of Catholicism in England. The plot was discovered by Elizabeth's spy master, Sir Francis Walsingham, and used to entrap Mary for the purpose of removing her as a claimant to the English throne. Note to self, hire a fucking spy master. <laughs> Derek, intern Derek. Yeah, it's like you're a... You're now spy master general. It's like a <laughs> spy master, but more useful. <laughs> 
Reacting to the growing <laughs> threat posed by Catholics, urged on by the Pope and other Catholic monarchs in Europe, Sir Francis, w- Francis Walsingham, Queen Elizabeth's Secretary of State and Spymaster, together with William Cecil, Elizabeth's chief advisor, realized that if Mary could be implicated in a plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth, she could be mm-hmm. executed and the threat diminished. Mm-hmm. If Rod Rosenstein could be implicated in a threat to the president, uh-huh. then he could be removed uh-huh. and Trump someone could else be could executed. fire Mueller. I'm just kidding. <coughs> <coughs> Walsingham wrote, quote, So long as that devilish woman lives, neither Her Majesty must make account to continue in quiet possession of her crown, nor her faithful servants assure themselves of safety of their lives. Very dramatic. Mm. So, mm. Walsingham used the Babington plot to ensnare Queen Mary, and here's how, kind of. <laughs> the chief <laughs> conspirators of the plot <laughs> were Anthony Babington and John Ballard. Babington was a young rebellious Catholic loyalist and was recruited by John Ballard, a Jesuit priest who hoped to rescue the Scottish queen. Working for Walsingham, the spy master, were double agents Robert Polly and Gilbert Gifford, as well as... Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> hey! As well as <laughs> Thomas Phillips, who doubled as a spy and cryptanalyst, which is fancy speak for someone who can solve puzzles and would have fucking creamed themselves over the Da Vinci Code had they been alive <laughs> to read it. For sure. <laughs> the turbulent Catholic deacon Gifford had been in Walsingham's service since the end of 1585, but of course, Babington and Ballard don't know that and trust this dude because he says he's Catholic. <clears throat> Gifford obtains a letter of introduction to Queen Mary from a confidant and spy for her, Thomas Morgan. Yes, both these bitches have spies, because why wouldn't they? Of course. Gifford necessary. gets this letter by befriending Morgan and pretending to be in on the Catholic overthrow plot. And Walsingham then basically fake arrests double agents Gifford and spy decipherer Philippe so he could place them inside Chartley Castle where Queen Mary was imprisoned. So now Tricky. we've got all these people that think they're doing one thing for someone when they're really just not doing any of those things for anyone except for this Walsington. Mm. Walsingham. <laughs> <coughs> totally makes sense. <laughs> Once inside the <laughs> castle sense. and pretending Clear to cozy up bell. to Mary, Gifford made a plan to place Babington and Queen Mary's encrypted communications into a beer barrel cork. Mm which was then intercepted by Philippe's, decoded and sent to Walsingham. Please, God, tell me you followed that because I'm not going over it again. Something about a cork. All I got, beer. Double agents, yeah. cork, <laughs> intercepted communication. Okay. It's really all, all you right. need. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. On July 7th, 1586, the only Babington letter that was ever successfully sent to Mary was intercepted and decoded by Philippe's. Mary responded in code, Ten days later, ordering the would-be rescuers to assassinate Queen Elizabeth, and she didn't fucking realize that Philippe's was her decoder was also a double agent, along with Gifford, mm. so she gave herself away like a fucking dumb bitch. Like a poltroon. Mm-hmm. I can't stress this enough. Vet the people you conspire with. <laughs> <laughs> Thoroughly. <laughs> We have the internet. There's no excuse for this, Mary Queen of Scots. It's literally the only rule. Yeah. Yeah. Someone saying they're Catholic is not enough. More than half of the people involved in this plot were double motherfucking Asians (laughs) working for Queen Elizabeth. Right. She had, like, Mary Queen of Scots had, like, one person who actually gave a fuck during this plot about getting her out of prison. Queen Elizabeth, like, grew up in the tower. Dude. Like, she's not fucking around. No, this bitch is covering her bases and trying to set her ass up to protect her throne at all times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the response letter also included deciphered phrases indicating her desire to be rescued, referring to, quote, the affairs being thus prepared, and, quote, I may suddenly be transported out of this place. I say that to myself every day. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, at the Fotheringay Gay trial in October 1586, Walsingham used the letter 
against Mary, who refused to admit that she was guilty. But she was ultimately betrayed by her secretaries, who confessed under pressure that the letter was mainly truthful after overhearing Pressure, yeah. i.e. torture. I.e. we will kill you if you don't tell us everything Mary said and make it work in our favor. Wah, mm-hmm. wah. Elizabeth had no choice but to gleefully sign Mary's death (laughs) warrant because, like, treason and assassination plots and whatever. And Mary, Queen of Scots, was beheaded at the Fotheringay Castle on February 8th, 1587. Could have just done that 18 years prior and saved everyone a huge hassle. I know. Wouldn't that have been nice? She needed an excuse. Yeah, she needed a reason. She's operating within the law. Barely. But she could have just Elizabeth like, was a, a letter citizen. from Mary, Queen of Scots, plotting yeah. an assassination. I mean, come on. Is that your whole case? I love that's my wow. case. Well, Mary's yeah. dead, and I don't care what happens to Elizabeth after. Makes that. me really want to watch I the feel... movie Elizabeth because it's so I fucking know. good. Well, there's a new movie coming out about Mary, Queen of Scots, where Margot Robbie plays her, and it's gonna <gasps> be fucking oh, awesome. Oh, fuck yes. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. That's my love language. Is uh, it is period dramas. pieces. Elizabethan yeah. dramas are your love language. They're mine yeah, too. Definitely. <laughs> I didn't skip a beat yeah. in your story. Oh, I love I know. it so much. I crushed also, I it. I don't feel so bad now saying like four people's weird names because. Oh, I had a paragraph that was only weird names that never mattered to the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it's like talking about a fucking monarchy all right and i deleted so many like side tangent things that came up in research just to try to make a linear fucking story which is (laughs) impossible (laughs) when you're talking about royalty yep uh, and of course, special thanks this week to our fan picker. That nose you knocked this picker. one out of the park. <laughs> pick it. Um, <laughs> we all pick our nose in private I'm doing it right and sometimes now. in public. I'm doing okay, it right now. let's not. The let's floor not of my car is ninety percent boogers. <laughs> never, up, never up, borrow a book from Amanda. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So our person who chose this episode topic, Lexi McClellan. Mm. Thank you so much for your choice. Love it. Lucy, you're next. Oh, I'm so sorry. A big <laughs> thank you to Eugene Martyr. Mm-hmm. Don't martyr Martyr-er. yourself, <laughs> Eugene. Don't martyr if I do. Don't mar- <laughs> martyr to your own drum. Thank you so much for your <laughs> Patreon pledge. Yes, as well as you, Alyssa James. I want to elicit mm-hmm. more James-sons. I don't. I'm tired. Thank you for your donation. <laughs> okay. Thank you to Jessica Britton. Britton. Uh... And that is our British accent. <laughs> Oi. Oi. Jessica Oi. Britton. Oi. <laughs> Jessica. That's the worst. <laughs> Thank you to Elizabeth Campbell. Your love and affection is like a warm bowl of Campbell soup. You're super we can't believe it. generous. You are super <laughs> generous. <laughs> Thank I get you, it. Emily like a... <laughs> Burr. It's cold in here. There must be some Patreons there must be in some the Emily's atmosphere. The atmosphere. Burr. Thank you so much for your donation. <laughs> uh, is it my turn? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Katie. <laughs> Katie. Katie Phillips. You fill us up. With joy. Someday somebody's going to make you want to turn around and turn around and say goodbye. Baby, got to donate on the Patreon for five dollars a dollars a dollars a month. <laughs> Keep paying us, us so we can go on. <laughs> go on for one more one day. For one more day. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, we have a new theme song now. <laughs> we just rewrote our intro. <laughs> A <laughs> uh, big thank you to Marcella Guajardo. Mm. That is a beautiful name. Marcella. Really Marcella Wallace. <laughs> Marcel the Show. We won't, we won't throw you out a window. Where the fuck is Wallace? <laughs> I oh, know. I get it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Thank you very much. 
And thank you, Sarah Rad. You're rad. super rad for your five dollar <laughs> a month donation. That was the lowest <laughs> hanging fruit special thanks name <laughs> I've ever ever seen, and, and I am I'm appreciative. appreciative. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to get a break we every needed, once in a while. We needed an easy win. Yeah. Um, <laughs> shout out to Katya Valencia. Mm. You sound like a Bond villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I dig it. You definitely have a pen that doubles as a gun. You do, or mm-hmm. a poison stabber. Mm-hmm. Poison dart. Just Doi. poison stabber. Poison dart. <laughs> you blow into the back of it. Thank you to Christine Harrison. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're pristine, Christine. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you to Amanda for helping me out there. You're welcome. Um. All I kept seeing was that movie Christine in my mind, and it's that true story about the news anchor who <laughs> shot herself on live TV. So okay. I was like, mm. uh, moving yeah. on. Thank Touchy. you, <laughs> Kyra Sturchelchik. Kira Sedgwick is donating <laughs> to our Patreon. This is a huge honor. Kira Sedgwick from The Closer. You're married to that one guy from Footloose. Uh, she thank needs you for to your be shaved. Kevin Bacon. Shaved she needs gray. to be shaved. <laughs> No, but <laughs> my favorite thing is that <laughs> Kira r- literally wrote "sorry" <laughs> in no parentheses after and then just her last "sorry" name. in parentheses. <laughs> you know what, bitch? I'm sorry there like, too. There are like four Z's in here. There's one <laughs> vowel in if the you entire don't count the Y. Sturchelchick. <laughs> Sturzel chick. Swizzle stick. Sturzel chick. Swizzle stick. Sturzel chick. Okay. All right. Moving on. Is it my turn? Kim Perkins. Yes. Kim Perkins. <laughs> Kim Perkins. <gasps> I love Perkins. Perkins has mm. really you great make me want pancakes. A pie, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so chicken strip you. basket. Baby, want a chicken strip basket in a pie. <laughs> And a pie for the road. And two pies for later. <laughs> I don't know what that voice is. Not but either, I like it. but it's the voice I of someone who eats crying. way too much Perkins. <laughs> I am fucking crying. Okay. Uh, who's turn who's is next? It? I have no. I think it's mine. It is. Yeah. All right. Thank you to Samantha Rolf, Christopher Aikman. That you is... sound like a composer for yeah. the sound of music. I was just going to say. <laughs> Dad, Hans Christian Andersen. I am 16 going Dad. on 17. Okay. <laughs> Ray, a drop of golden sun. Samantha, you are one of our favorite things. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, good one. And someone who needs no last name. Anna. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for your five dollars a month, Anna. I hardly can, knew. I her. only as, I can only assume your last name is Banana <laughs> or Nicole Smith. Uh, mm, right. Uh, <laughs> um, or Sedgwick. She's the sister. Yeah. Um, Shauna Stallheber. 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 Shauna, we fauna over you. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we Stahlheber, go. Stallheber, baby. Oh. JV, our friend JV, Hampton Van Sant, increased their pledge from $5 to $10 a month. Thank you. You Thank are you. the sweetest thing. I think JV is going to the New York show and the Boston shows, too. Yes. So we yes, are going to hug you, baby child. Also, mm-hmm. by the time this airs, you will have received your shirt and tank top that I shipped out to you this morning. God bless. I cannot wait to see your bod clawed mm. in our merch. In our mod. <laughs> um, and thank you, Meg Moore, for more of your generous donations. You are giving $10 mm-hmm. a month. You get a fucking patriarchy wine glass. I want more. I want to be <laughs> where the fucking patriarchies are. <laughs> I, I don't want to be. Want to see white man falling, <laughs> <laughs> burning Shut in up. hell with that? What's that word again? Oh, fire, justice, justice, <laughs> gavel, and not of the Supreme um, Court variety. Mm-mm. All right, flipping your to- fancy don't get too far. <laughs> <laughs> These are required, but okay, sorry. But dancing. 
My neighbors are okay. like, what the fuck? <laughs> His dick fell off. <laughs> been a while <laughs> i shove jelly beans up my butthole <laughs> i need to buy a house oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah please give more money for please. amanda's neighbors Save my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> all right shout out to tammy warren uh your last name makes me think of empire records oh, yeah. and i appreciate it your pledge warrants a thank you from us yes oh as does Katie Gruner's ten dollar a month donation. Gruner. Gruner. Mm. That's a type of wine. Man. Gruner. I hardly knew her. Gruner. Hardly there we knew go. Her. <laughs> you have been blessed with umlauts in your last name, and I am a little envious. Mm -hmm. I'm also, Thank you so much. I'm also envious of Megan Shea. She makes me want to rub shea butter all over mm -hmm. my Ooh. supple body <laughs> in appreciation of her $10 <laughs> a month donation. <laughs> in memoriam. You're to welcome I'm super for that slippery. image. <laughs> I'm slick with pleasure. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> what? Shout out to Sarah Snow uh, in our trash queen category. There's you snow are gonna going be getting... back now. <laughs> <laughs> you know nothing, Sarah Snow. You know everything, Sarah Snow. You do know everything. Uh, you know the importance you're... of your Patreon donation. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you also to fellow trash queen Tyler Gosvik. Gosvik. Mm -hmm. Ghost. Who are you going to call? Gosvik. <laughs> Ghost Vicker oh, Tyler Vicker I don't know Ghost Vicks Vapor Rub You are soothing mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much um, Becca Adair You're the Adair in our lungs Thank you for your $15 a month <laughs> donation I dare say we like I dare you. say <laughs> I dare you to increase that pledge <laughs> No Becca's giving plenty Alright yeah. shout out to Tara Bates. Hi, Tara. Oh, Hi, Tara. We love Tara. Tara. Hi, Tara. Yes. Tara, mm. you are very generously giving $25 a month, which gets you a fucking patriarchy wine glass and a tote bag. Get your swag. Because you are a tote. Totes Bates amazing. Mm -hmm. She's greats. <laughs> also, greats is Rhiannon Howerton, Rhiannon. who gave us a $10 once-off donation. Mm. Thank you so much. Those once-offs are so sweet. We got a record player uh, on our wedding registry, and we went and bought some records recently, and we bought uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors, yes, and Zach had obviously. never, I mean, Rhiannon is not on that album, but whatever. He had never heard Fleetwood Mac before, I swear to God, what? and now he is obsessed with Fleetwood Mac, and was like, we should, yeah, I think duh. they still tour. We because should go Fleetwood see Mac is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that so whole album is like magic. And they were super it's duper amazing. coked up and like fighting the entire time they wrote it. I which can't is do like any yeah. part when it. I'm coked up. So I'm very, very impressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm also impressed with right. Lindsay Reisinger for also mm -hmm. giving a $25 once off donation. Once again, if you have commitment issues, you can wander right over to our online store, wineandcrimepodcast.bigcartel.com, and make a once-off donation a, a little more in your price range instead of committing to a monthly donation on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Lindsay Reisinger, you have rise to the occasion. To the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, special thanks to our sponsor, Talkspace. For $45 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals. Get it. Do Treat it. your brain. Treat it. See you next week. We love you. Bye. Bye-bye. Mm, thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kali Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. 
More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout out on air, visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! Hi, I'm Michael, host of the Murder Mile True Crime Podcast, which was nominated as one of the best British true crime podcasts of 2018. It's based on my five-star rated guided walk and features more than 300 untold, unsolved and long-forgotten murders, all set within one square mile of London's West End. So if you love hearing about new cases for the first time, old cases through a fresh pair of ears, and classic cases with a twist, all researched using the original declassified police investigation files, written using first-hand accounts, and recorded using authentic sounds from the murder location itself, then Murder Mile is just for you. Download the Murder Mile True Crime Podcast on iTunes, Acast, or your favourite podcast platform every Thursday. Thank you for listening, and stay safe.